Okay, they cannot speak, right? Okay. Already speaker is there, right, Akshay? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, now, uh, shall I wait? Or sir, there is a lot of disturbance. I think it's from the speaker's end. Yeah, there are disturbance. Uh, it's ninety-eight participants now. Ah, uh, adhune naan kerti the. Actually, what kind of? So now it's not there. It's fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe. Oh, it's okay, no? Yes, sir. But sometimes it is coming like that. Okay. Uh, shall I start or now how many are there? Uh, it's uh, okay. So uh, shall I start now or uh, do we yes, need sir. to wait for one more minute? One ten, nearly one ten parts. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, something, okay, fine. We'll start, right? Uh, maybe uh, uh, everyone has joined, or if uh, some more people will come later, then you will let them join. Uh, we'll start, right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, speaker has joined, right, Akshay? Yes, sir. He's ready. He's ready. Okay. Uh, respected uh, principal, madam, uh, my dear colleagues, uh, faculty members from various colleges and universities, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of you present here on behalf of Padmasri Institute of Management and Sciences. On the second day of the lecture series come FDP on protein characterization using bioinformatics tools. I would also like to express my gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Angsuman Bagchi, who has accepted our invitation to share his knowledge on another important aspect of protein analysis, that is functional sites of proteins. Over to you, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> hello, everybody. Um, let us um, uh, start with uh, today's uh, discussion. I'm going to share my screen with you. Yeah. So, today, um, the topic is uh, domain and domain databases, and uh, that means this is entirely focused on proteins. So, first of all, uh, let us start with a very basic definition of domain. It is uh, what is a domain? It is a compact protein structure, a structure which can fold independently of the entire protein, and the domains have specific arrangements of secondary structural units like the alpha helices and beta helices. Proteins can be classified on the basis of the domains present in them, and the domains have and the domains have um, specific uh, characteristic features. So, why is the identification of domain so essential? Because the domains perform 
multiple of functions of proteins, the most of the biochemical reactions are uh, performed by uh, proteins and the proteins use the specific domains to carry out their uh, important functional roles. There are multiple uh, uh, experimental methods to identify the structures of uh, domains as well as there are various bioinformatics tools and databases to predict the different domains in proteins. So, the domains. The domain characteristic or the functionality of a protein is uh, based on how the different and domains in a protein are joined together. If a protein may, be, may contain a single domain, may contain concatenated domains, that means two domains joined by a linkage, may contain intercalated domains, that means one domain which has two parts and the other domain which is intact and they are kind of linked to each other. And then interlaced domains. Here, both the domains are of uh, different, uh, that means both the domains contain different subdomains or subunits, and they are also connected. So, uh, uh, in a broad sense, domains can be classified as continuous and discontinuous. And this kind of arrangement of domains would give us an idea about the specific structure and function of the protein. Um, let me um, ask you, uh, is everything, that means, is the connectivity okay from my end? You can hear me and you can uh, see my uh, presentation, right, all of you? Yes, sir, we can see your presentation. Yeah. Okay, and you can hear my voice as well, right? Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> the next is the sequence relationship. So uh, what uh, we bioinformaticians do while uh, uh, performing uh, bioinformatics analysis, sequence information of specific domains and store those sequence information of those specific domains in different databases. Whenever we get a new protein sequence, we try to match the sequence information from the new sequence with the existing ones which are present in the different domain databases. And that way we can have, we can predict what type of domains might be present in the newly identified amino acid sequence of the protein. So uh, that means, in other words, the amino acid sequences of proteins, they are, they play some guiding roles, some deciding roles on the structure or the existence of the domain. The domain sizes, it varies. Uh, some domains are very small, like around 40 amino acid residues. Some domains are very large. In general, we have uh, the most of the proteins contain uh, domains in the range 60 to 90 amino acid residues. This is on an average. So, uh, this is our statistics where uh, uh, we are uh, here we represent uh, the single domain proteins and um, and, and uh, in the x-axis, there is the amino acid sequence length. And uh, y-axis represents the percentage or the numbers of single domain proteins. It varies from single domain to two domains, three domains, four domains, five domains. And C. If the C. Uh, as we were, the total number of proteins having six domains are much less than the total number of proteins having one domain. So, uh, this is also another representation 
and uh, this is uh, called the chain hydrophobicity. Mainly, if a protein contains hydrophobic regions, uh, that means hydrophobic amino acids, the domains are considered to be present in the protein core or the interior of the protein. For multi-domain proteins, uh, the extent of hydrophobicity uh, is kind of uh, decreased. Uh, now, domain characterization. So, domains are uh, have observed are found to be present in lower organisms like archaea, bacteria, to higher organisms like eukaryotes. Now, the unicellular organisms contain some specific domains, and mostly they contain single domain proteins. The multi-domain proteins are generally present in eukaryotes and rather in the higher eukaryotes. And one more important aspect that uh, we need to remember here uh, to perform bioinformatics analysis of protein domains is that for a multi-domain protein, the multi-domain, the different domains are considered to be independent of each other. That means the functionality of one domain or the structure or the folding pattern of one domain is not dependent on the other domains present in the protein or rather is independent of the folding pattern of the entire protein. Domain fusion. This is another important aspect that we need to remember in order to study the bioinformatics aspect of protein domain. See, in some cases, we find that two independent domains are combined together and they produce a large single domain. But the large single domain should contain all the properties of the independent domains. Though the independent domains which are being fused to produce the large domain, those <clears throat> independent domains do not exist on their own. But their characteristic characteristic patterns should be um, should be present in the entire uh, large domain. For example, say domain A, it is mainly alpha helical, and domain B is mainly um, beta. Now, whenever we have a single domain, and that means by fusing the alpha helical and beta domains, uh, we get a large single domain which contains the same proportion of alpha helical regions and beta regions. And um, this is what um, I just mentioned. Uh, the domain fusion uh, is uh, dependent on the functionality of the, of the organism. In some organisms, generally, what we observe is that the domain fusion method is generally um, found to be most operative uh, in case of high carriers than in the lower organisms. Uh, this is uh, a typical example of a chymotrypsin molecule. In this particular case, what we observe is that the chymotrypsin molecule, the active sites are something like this. It is present in the black hole. So uh, for lower organisms, the active site is this, and the lower organisms contain only a single domain. In higher organisms, the two domains are fused together. Now what happens is the active site, on fusing the two domains, the active site is enhanced, is increased. The extent of active site is increased. That means the protein functionality is kind of enhanced. That is why, that is why I was uh, telling you that the domain fusion method is mainly operative in higher organisms, not in lower organisms, because higher organisms are much more complicated. They have much more complicated biochemical processes, biochemical reactions going on in them. So they might need more and more active sites. Then comes another uh, type of um, uh, correlation or another type of uh, mixing of two domains. It's called domain swapping. What happens here is that the two, two domains, they are not fused together, but they kind of joined, uh, they may be joined together by uh, suitable linkers. So that is called domain swapping. Uh, 
Now, let me uh, uh, come to the different types of domain databases. These are the important domain databases that are mostly used, the blocks, the interpro, the PFAM, the prints, the prosite, and these are the sequence. And these are, um, are the, these are the databases which contain the sequence, amino acid sequence information of the different domains. And there are uh, different databases like CAP, FSSE and SCOP, they store uh, information about the structural uh, aspects of the different domains. Now, uh, let us consider uh, one of the most vital domain databases that is called blocks. The blocks database uh, is um, an ancient domain database, I should say. It is coming directly from ProSite. Uh, uh, let me explain a little bit of uh, the blocks domain database. The blocks domain database, what it does is that is <coughs> it takes the sequence information of the different domains and stores those sequence information in the database. For example, say you have a domain helix turn helix. Now, that helix turn helix DNA binding domain, it has some sequence specificity. So, the sequence specificity, that means the amino acid sequences of all the domains which contain the helix turn helix uh, uh, kind of arrangement, uh, those sequence information are present in the blocks domain database. So, it is a kind of uh, representation of the amino acid disposition of the different domains. This is uh, another uh, COGS uh, cluster of orthologous, orthologous groups. This is uh, basically DOCS database is more general. This is a specified database. It stores the domain information of all the orthogonal ancestors. Originally, this database was created uh, uh, using the domain information of bacteria and archaea. Um, so, uh, this is a kind of classification, uh, kind of uh, example. But uh, in our bioinformatics analysis, we generally use the blocks database because that is uh, more user friendly. And uh, see, sometimes it is not always possible uh, to know the ancestral relationship. That means uh, we might not be able to know the common ancestor. So, uh, and since orthologous, that means COG is based on um, the information, sequence information of orthologous protein that is coming from the same uh, common ancestor. So that is why we generally I try to avoid this database, but until and unless, uh, like if you are uh, using some known sequences, and if, uh, if you know the common ancestor, in that case, you may use this particular type of database, COG database. Uh, see, uh, I think I told you yesterday that uh, the bioinformatics is a need based science, it is uh, not a general science. So, uh, 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 you, there are different uh, options available. You need to choose only those options which are linked, which are associated with your study, with your research. Then comes this is a very vital database, prints and database. This is coming directly from Swiss plot. See, here what happens is it stores regular expressions of the different domains. For example, uh, say you are having a helix turn helix um, pattern of domain. Now, you are performing a multiple sequence alignment between all the proteins having that, that helix turn helix domain. What you are getting from the multiple sequence alignment a consensus sequence. A consensus sequence means it is a, a series of amino acids which are found to be present in all the 
a helix turn helix domains in all these organisms. This is called regular expression. So, for a helix turn helix domain, there is a specific type of regular expression. So, if you can find the regular expression in your protein, your unknown protein, that means your protein of your interest, you can surely identify the specific type of domain that might be present in your unknown protein. So, the regular expressions give us an idea about the general sequence, general amino acid distribution of a specific domain. And all these information are present in print data. See, uh, uh, this is an example. Here, this is a multiple sequence alignment of all the beta hemoglobin motifs from different organisms. This is from this from rat, mouse, bovine, human, and so on and so forth. Now, from this multiple sequence alignment, what we can find out is that uh, there is a kind of common region. For example, this tryptophan, this proline, this threonine, all, all these amino acid residues are completely conserved. So we can say that and this beta hemoglobin motif has a common region which contains these amino acid residues. So, uh, this PRINCE database, um, this is the utility of the PRINCE database, which is mainly dependent on the multiple sequence alignments of known domain family proteins. Okay. Then comes another database, PRODOM database. Uh, but uh, before I proceed further, I think uh, what I'm talking today is a kind of, is a little bit, um, that means it requires a little bit involved bioinformatics. So if there is any question regarding this, uh, I, I would like to clarify uh, those or answer those questions. Uh, sir, uh, we have a, okay. Uh, is, is it over, sir? Yes. Uh, is it over, sir? Or... Uh... Uh, like the question will be at the end, uh, whatever we have kept this session. Uh, and actually, uh, what I would like to have is that I'd like to have some interactions with the participants because what I'm talking about today, yesterday it was a very general bioinformatics, so uh, it was not very difficult. But today, uh, since I'm talking about a little bit of uh, sequence alignments and everything, so uh, uh, there might be some problems uh, here. Okay. The chat so, box is open. Uh, I'd uh, like to, uh, if there's a question, I'd like to. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, as the chat box is open, uh, participants can share your questions uh, in the chat box. I request participants, if you have any questions, you can share in the chat box. Okay, um, there is one question uh, I um, found. Uh, are the databases curated or simple user submitted? No, the databases are curated. You cannot submit your data here. Do uh, they support programmatic access? Uh, no, they do not. You can, uh, there is an option here that you can download the database and enforce the database with R or Python, any script. But you cannot do so, uh, uh, like you cannot directly interact with uh, these databases. 
uh, the next there is a question uh, does the function of two domains get interchanged during the uh, this is uh, uh, yes the answer is both yes and no the function may change the function may not change whenever a domain swapping process occurs what happens is uh, the domain swapping is generally done uh, to change the relative positions of the different domains so in a way we can say that the function of the domain is uh, changed but sometimes it may so happen that and because of domain swapping the entire uh, active type of the two domains are get more exposed that means amino acid residues in the active sites of the two domains they are more exposed towards uh, their surrounding environment so uh, the domain swapping might help in uh, accelerating a particular biochemical process without changing the overall function of the domain uh, what is the use of the prodome database uh, prodome i see all these databases store different the structure as well as the sequence patterns of the domains the structure and the sequence pattern so <clears throat> from these databases what you can find out is that uh, uh, you can compare your sequence with the sequences that are present in these databases so if your sequence matches with any of the sequences present in these databases you can identify the uh, the presence of possible structures the possible uh, domain structures in your sequence uh, how to compare the domains of multiple proteins yes uh, the domains of multiple proteins uh, may be compared with the help of multiple sequence alignments what uh, uh, what is uh, generally done here is that uh, there are uh, two ways to do it uh, uh, and as I told you that uh, this is a need-based science, so uh, if you just want to compare uh, the amino acid sequences of uh, multiple proteins of the same family, you can simply perform a multiple sequence alignment uh, using the amino acid sequences of the domains of the uh, proteins of the same family. Now, but uh, if you want to have an idea about uh, like about the presence of some uh, some kind of domain in a new protein sequence in that case what you need to do is you first need to classify the new protein sequence into any of the specific domain classes then only you'll be able to perform the multiple sequence alignment or the comparison with uh, uh, the existing uh, proteins of the uh, specific uh, belonging to a specific domain class. Any other question or anything you want me to clarify? Uh, so uh, shall I resume my uh, presentation then? Yeah, you can proceed, sir. So, <clears throat> now <clears throat> this prodome database, this is uh, also coming from SwissProt and translated EMDL and sequence databases and uh, this prodome database is a, a kind of uh, uh, contains um, information uh, which like uh, information of the domain sequence and domain structure together so this is kind of these databases are kind of uh, redundant databases different at, uh, at different times these different databases are being generated to solve 
specific uh, bi uh, bioinformatics problems. And, and here, what I would like to mention is that uh, the different databases have different uh, patterns of uh, data uh, deposition. Like, for example, the uh, data in prodome data, in prints or blocks databases are present in uh, uh, other formats. So, uh, it depends on uh, your uh, existing uh, bioinformatics knowledge uh, and that, uh, like, and like some formats are recognized by some specific uh, scripts like Python or R, and some formats require some modification. So in that case, so uh, uh, this is again uh, um, need based. Like if you have a good Python or Perl or R script, you can use any of the format. But if you don't have uh, that good a script, in that case, you need to modify uh, the data in the database in order to uh, make your program read the data, understand the data. Now, ProSite database. This is a very important database and uh, like everyone is using this ProSite database. It stores the sequence information of all the proteins, whatever proteins we have. It stores the annotations of the domain information. It further stores the location where you, uh, where the domain is mostly present, the chromosomal location, as well as the location of the link where uh, this particular uh, protein, which um, stores which contains a specific domain, is present. So this is a more uh, extensive and exhaustive database. Proside pattern, uh, see, this is, uh, as I was talking about the regular expression, the proside mainly gives this regular expression. This AS means, see, uh, this is a sequence line range. So this AS stands for the first letter is either A or S. The second letter is D. The third letter is I or V or L. The second letter is G. And then after G, there are four positions which are completely variable. So this is X. X means uh, uh, any amino acid can be present after G. And uh, uh, after um, G, there are four positions where any amino acid can be present. Then is G, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then comes L, F, R, L. So that means proline or glycine are not present. Any other amino acid may be present, but except proline and glycine. Then comes the conserved C, then comes D or E, then comes R, then comes F, Y. And then lastly, so uh, this is the regular expression of a specific uh, domain or a specific domain family. That means all the members belonging to that particular domain family should have this type of regular expression or the pattern of amino acid sequence or the distribution of amino acid sequence. So this is a more general expression. And if we can find out the regular expression and if we can match the regular expression with our Protein of interest, we can identify the presence of specific domains. This is our statistics, and, uh, and these are uh, the different types of regular expressions that are present in the uh, ProSide database. Okay, then comes PFAN. PFAN database. This is another important, very important uh, domain database. Um, it allows you to search for specific uh, domains in your uh, amino acid sequence. So in uh, none of the uh, previous databases would allow the user to search the database with some known or unknown amino acid sequence. There 
are certain tools where you can put your data and then that tool goes to these databases and take out their uh, take out the answer and give you the answer but this PFAM database uh, will uh, that means it allows you to directly interact with it for example uh, if you have an amino acid sequence there is a text box in PFAM database you can directly put your amino acid sequence over there and PFAM would identify what type of domains are there so it is highly interactive there is um, no involvement of any third-party software between you and the database. All the other previous databases would need a third-party software. So uh, this is uh, PFAM. So uh, PFAM, uh, PFAM is distributed uh, as PFAM A and PFAM B. PFAM A means this, um, uh, this PFAM database stores uh, uh, information of uh, mainly amino acid residues where uh, and there is 63% amino acids are common and uh, if the 20% amino acids are common between the different domain families uh, they are present in uh, uh, PFAM B. This is a PFAM alignment. The alignment looks like uh, uh, a multiple sequence alignment as before, but uh, the difference is here you can perform the multiple sequence alignment or the PFAM alignment directly with your sequence without using any other tool. Uh, then comes Interpro. Uh, this is a combination database. That means this database stores uh, or gathers or captures information from all the other databases that I just discussed and, and they store uh, the information over there. It is not used that much. So the Interpro database collects information from all these sources. But this Interpro database is a little bit uh, complicated one since it has so many information merged together. though it is very extensive. Now, uh, the databases so far I discussed, those are dependent on the amino acid sequences of the different domains. Now, uh, we would like to concentrate on the domain structural databases, for example, CAP, FSSP, and SCOT. So, uh, structural domains. See, in bioinformatics, uh, there is uh, one particular weird state a gold standard. That means structure is more conserved than sequence. That means two different sequences may give rise to a specific structure. So on the basis of that, the different types of structural domain databases are created. So the first method is <coughs> Uh, the detecting how to detect the structural domains and the structural domains are generally that means the de and detection technique is a very complicated one and uh, uh, so uh, I'm I'm concentrating only on the databases. So CAT CAT means class architecture topology and uh, 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 homology class class means it is the protein class architecture means uh, it is the specific arrangement of the uh, secondary structured elements topology or fold means how the secondary structural arrangements how the um, secondary structures are interconnected and homology means whether these interconnected uh, domains have any common ancestor so uh, um, CAT has all these classifications. It covers the proteins in mainly alpha, beta, and alpha slash beta. So alpha, all alpha or alpha uh, classification means uh, uh, the domains which are mainly alpha helical and they can they uh, uh, do not contain any beta sheet rich. Similarly for beta and alpha slash beta means they uh, the, the domains which are made up of both alpha helical and beta sheet rich. And uh, so this is 
CCG is not important. If it's if, if this is also uh, uh, like an extension of protein data bank, and it is also a, not uh, it's not very popular as well. Then comes POP. This is uh, another very vital uh, structural database of domains. Uh, it stores uh, the domains uh, as all alpha, all beta, alpha plus beta, and alpha plus beta. So all alpha means if a domain contains more than 20% alpha helical region, it is called alpha or alpha. All beta, the same. Alpha slash beta means alpha and beta sheets are present in 50-50 ratio and they are separate. That means the alpha helix and beta sheets are, are not mixed together in the domain. And alpha slash beta means it is also it also contains alpha helices and beta sheets in a 50-50 ratio, but the alpha helices and beta sheets are intermixed, joined together by link origins. So that is called alpha slash beta. So there lies the difference between cap and scop. So uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, we uh, in bioinformatics study, we mainly use uh, uh, these three the cap, the scop, for the structural classification and from and that means this cap and scop we can only use if we know the structure if we do not know the structure but if we know the sequence only then we use the previous databases like prosite like interpro like pfan so bioinformatics uh, uh, deals with both sequences and structures now Again, I'm saying bioinformatics is weak based. If you have your sequence only, then you can use only the sequence related databases, the databases which give you, which takes the sequence as the input. If you have structure, then you can use this CAT and SCOP or uh, any other database. So uh, structure is definitely more reliable, gives you more uh, and more, gives you a better result than sequence, but it is not always possible to have the structures of the sequence structures of all the proteins for which uh, uh, the sequencing uh, uh, experiments are done but the, um, like the structures are very difficult to obtain because uh, in order to uh, like in order to get the structure of a protein you need to perform lots and lots of experiments and the experiments are very very difficult sequencing much easier, is much easier so uh, uh, in bioinformatics we mostly focus we mostly um, start our work uh, uh, by analyzing the sequence and then we move on to the structure if available. So, uh, uh, and these are the different types of um, sequence and structural databases uh, um, uh, that are uh, routinely used in bioinformatics. Uh, so, uh, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm, I'll be happy to answer the questions. I believe uh, in the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, comparison of the domains can be done for how many amino acids? Uh, generally, com domain comparison, uh, uh, you can uh, use as many amino acids as possible, but uh, the software tools are uh, generally very much sensitive up to 200 amino acids. After that, uh, the, the process becomes very slow. Uh, regular expression refers to search. Uh, uh, it is only for the searching, not the biological expression. Is there any tool to compare the 3D structure protein domain uh, other than, uh, yes, there is a tool uh, that is called DALI, D-A-L-I. That you can use directly to compare the 3D structure of domains without using a multiple sequence alliance.
if we have only sequence information, can we build the uh, yes. If we have only the sequence information, we can surely uh, build the structure uh, of a protein domain. Uh, but for that, you need to have a template. Uh, template means uh, it is a protein uh, for uh, which you know both the sequence and the structure. And then you can compare uh, the your unknown sequence with the known sequence for the structure is available. And then you can build the structure of the unknown sequence using the known uh, using uh, the sequence information of the known protein. Um, homology modeling, uh, yes, homology modeling is one. Uh, that is absolutely true. But for homology modeling, um, you have to have uh, like a greater than thirty percent sequence identity. Uh, yes, there should be similar reference sequences. Reference sequences having structure in the database. Uh, yes, you can find the mutant sequences. There are DBSNP database. SIP is uh, the uh, DBSNP is the database which stores information of the mutations, the single nucleotide -like polymorphisms. Any other question? Yes, all these databases are free to access. You can easily access. There is no charge. Uh, how do we compare normal protein structure, disease structure, and dot structure? Uh, normal protein structure means these um, are the structures uh, which are present in the protein data. The disease structures, uh, if you have, if you perform, for example, nowadays you will find uh, in the PDB, in the protein data bank, you will find lots and lots of structures of uh, SARS CoV 2, uh, the spike protein. So uh, from PDB, uh, you can find the disease structure. Docs for doc structure. Um, you need to, there is no such database. Um, if you, uh, if you uh, are using your own docking tool, in that case, uh, what you can do is you can dock the two structures together and uh, use the, the uh, tool called Tally and then compare your dock structure with the existing structures. But uh, there is, uh, uh, that is, uh, in my knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. there is no structure of doc database, uh, like doc structures of protein in database. Uh, whether the drug is active for the purpose. Yeah, um, in that case, uh, what you can do is you can perform a structural comparison to check the RNS deviations, the root mean square deviations between the uh, positions of the active site amino acid residues. Uh, so if before docking and after docking, there are changes in the positions of the amino acid residues, in the structural disposition of the amino acid residues, if you find any change in the structural disposition of the amino acid residues present in the active site, you, you might uh, you might conclude that uh, that means after docking uh, or in disease condition, the protein structure is changed. Or uh, like in presence of any external ligand, uh, the 
the structure is changed. That is one way of uh, doing the comparison between a normal protein um, structure and a mutated. Um, that means uh, the interpretation can be done in many different ways. Uh, you can check the relative positions of the secondary structures, like the positions of the alpha helices and beta helices, if the alpha helices are changed to uh, any other form, and then um, the root mean square deviation between the amino acid residues. Any any other queries? Okay, I think uh, that's all. Uh, I hope the lecture was enjoyable and fruitful to all of you with uh, much interactive session with real-time examples about domain analysis, various domain database. Uh, I hope there are no more questions. Uh, one, uh, one important, uh, one small announcement uh, regarding little change in the uh, timing for tomorrow's session, uh, which will start at 7 p.m. rather than 3 p.m. Uh, the region, uh, we have kept the speaker from abroad so in view of their timings, we made this change. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, all of your participation and exchanging your innovative thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, shall I end it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah.